Let's uh, cut across to day two of the Munich Security Conference, where German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is currently speaking. But we can say with confidence that this model has held firm against this competition. The reasons for that have not changed today. Democracies are more adaptable and resilient in the long term because freedom of opinion and diversity of opinion, free elections, the recognition of political opposition, the protection of minorities ensure equitable societies. States in which the rule of law prevails generate confidence and stability. And countries are stronger when they respect human dignity instead of trust on it. There is nothing divisive about confidently asserting this, because a life in freedom, justice and dignity is precisely not an exclusively Western aspiration, but a deeply human, universal one. This concept of universal values is also at the root of the international order that emerged from the cataclysms of the 20th century. It has ensured a balance of interests and growing prosperity, and not just in North America and Europe, but precisely in those parts of the world that now, in light of their increasing economic and political weight, want to have a greater say and a greater hand in shaping the future and indeed must do so. We should welcome this drive to join in shaping events as it, is, as it is a mark of success because independent and strong partners do not weaken our position. In fact, they offer the possibility of solving problems that even the biggest and strongest cannot handle alone. However, this international order is entirely dependent on a willingness to cooperate, even when discussion with the other party is challenging, with clear convictions, pragmatism, a healthy self-confidence, and yes, certainly, an awareness of one's own strength. It is sustained by one core promise, that everyone, even the strong, will play by the rules. And that brings me to what we have seen in the east of our continent in recent months. To put it plainly, there is nothing that justifies the deployment of well over 100,000 Russian soldiers surrounding Ukraine. Russia is holding up the issue of Ukraine's potential accession to NATO as a casus belli. That is a paradox, because there is no decision depending on the issue whatsoever. We Europeans and the transatlantic community have warned Russia that military aggression against Ukraine would be a severe error, and we want this not to happen. Russia has now disclosed its response to the proposals made by the US, and I say that, yes, we're ready to negotiate, and in doing so, we will, of course, make a clear distinction between untenable demands and legitimate security interests. We must have the confidence to differentiate between the two, given everything that is at stake. The fundamental principles of the OECE are non-negotiable for us. Russia has agreed to them and they include the right to freely choose one's alliances. At the same time, there are questions of security that are important for both sides. First and foremost, transparency around weapons systems and exercises, risk mitigation mechanisms and new approaches to arms control. At my meeting with President Putin on Tuesday, I made it clear that any further violation of the territorial integrity of Ukraine will have a high price for Russia in political, economic and geostrategic terms. And I added at the same time that diplomacy will not fail because of us. As much diplomacy as possible without being naive. That is what we strive for. And we are utilizing all channels of communication to this end. The NATO-Russia Council, which has met again for the first time in years. The OCE, where conflict prevention can be discussed with all Europeans, Russians and Americans. Poland, as the current chair, has made suggestions in this regard. There is the bilateral channel between Russia and the United States, and we're utilizing the Normandy format. It remains crucial for the resolution of the Ukraine conflict. 
During my visits to Kiev and Moscow, both sides emphasized their readiness to implement the Mon- Minsk agreements. And I'm very grateful above all to President Zelensky for his commitment to now make progress with the necessary laws and to discuss these in the trilateral contact group. Of course, I'm not under any illusions. We cannot expect to see progress overnight. However, we can only stop this crisis in its tracks if we negotiate. For what is at stake, after all, is nothing less than peace in Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, all of this has to be accompanied by a repositioning of Europe and the transatlantic alliance in a changed world. The strategy processes within the European Union and NATO therefore hold a special significance. And I would like to mention four more fundamental considerations here today. Firstly, we will develop a broader understanding of security. The MSC, um, Mr. Ishinger, has always been a pioneer in this respect. It has come to address the risks arising from climate change, global health crises, or the abuse of cyber space, space and new technologies as a matter of course. But for this broad understanding to emerge, it is essential for the European Union and NATO to complement and reinforce one another, to prepare themselves to face new risks. Ultimately, a cyber attack remains a cyber attack, regardless of whether it is directed from St. Petersburg, Tehran, or Pyeongchang. I think we agree, however, that taking new threats like these into account is something different than laying claim to a globally active NATO. Indeed, the developments of recent months in particular show us how vital it remains to concentrate on the issue of defending the alliance in the North Atlantic area. And we need to muster the capabilities required for this. And yes, that includes Germany too. Airplanes that fly, ships that can set out to sea, soldiers who are optimally equipped for the dangerous task. These are things that a country of our size, a country that bears a special responsibility within Europe, must be able to manage. And I believe that we owe this to our allies in NATO too. To them, I address myself and say that Germany stands by the guarantee of Article 5 unconditionally, and we're also showing practical solidarity at the moment, for example, with a greater Bundeswehr presence in the Baltic and with NATO air policing in the alliance's southeast. That brings me to my second point. The repositioning of our alliances is not taking place in a vacuum. There is an interplay with other players and their ambitions. The starting point for this is a clear-headed analysis of the world around us. Almost 8 billion people currently live on our planet, and this number is rising. Just a fraction of the total, 450 million and 330 million, respectively, live in the European Union or the United States. We can see similar trends when we look at our shares in the global economy in recent decades. The slices of the pie are shrinking. And for me, this means that the world of the 21st century is neither unipolar nor bipolar. It will have various centers of power. And this development is not in itself a bad thing. If prosperity increases as a result, or to stay with the metaphor, if the pie as a whole becomes bigger, over 1 billion fewer people live in extreme poverty today than 30 years ago, and this achievement is an achievement of the entire international community, one that we must fight for, particularly now amid the pandemic. And the emergence of a middle class in countries such as China, Indonesia, and India also benefits workers here. In Asia in particular, it is in any case not a rise that we should speak of, but if anything, a revival. Being a major power from the perspective of Beijing or Delhi is not a historical anomaly, but rather a return to the status quo ante. And there's nothing wrong with that, quite the opposite. 
What is problematic is when this growth in significance is translated into a demand for legions or spheres of influence, when universal rules that someone previously upheld are swept aside overnight. No country should the ba- be the backyard of another. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.